Yes, I hello, hello, hello. It's your boy Ambassador Ambassador again doing this thing. So, you got your boy King B swag with a new track, Rapperholic. It's a 3 minute 48 second piece of work. Well, I mean, it came out a couple of days ago, but you know, like a Christmas period, I've been crazy. But I've been listening to it over and over again. I was just getting the vibes, and I was, but it just got me thinking a lot about the Kamunya industry because I feel like this one he's like, um, it's a message to the Kamunyan industry. And you know, like, I, li I like this whole spirit of like, I defend my country. But I also call them out for their BS, yeah. So it's like, okay, I don't want anybody, you don't criticize us in public, but when it comes to constructive work, we, we talk to ourselves and we build it. So I like this whole like, approach of he defends Cameroon out there, but now he comes back home and he tells his brothers the truth, like, man, this thing ain't working like this. So I just said it's a track where he's like, he came on the 25th of December, so it's like a gift to the hip hop industry, I'll call it that way, yeah. Christmas gift. And then he's like cleaning up the house and then trying to rearrange the house. That's just a summary line, an analogy for the whole track, yeah. Where he starts by defining what's a workaholic and then a rapaholic. And then he does some kind of self introduction where he's um, about his sort of his inspiration from the golden era, for those who know the golden era. And he does a lot of those kind of lines here where he talks about his old school, but his new school. He's a vet, but he's a rookie, yeah. So, and I can see that a lot in King B. He's not in the whole trend of. And it's a shame, but I feel like he's taking the sustainable road, yeah. He's not in the whole trend of, um, how do we say, trap, um, jumping to Afro something now just to trend. But I feel like his rap is sustainable and anytime, any day, if Cameroon has a competition rap-wise to go put on a plate in a global beat for Africa beat in the world, I'm going with King B every day in Cameroon. Fact. Because he has a unique mix. I feel like, okay, we, the two biggest names in Cameroon, Antra Guillemet in bracket, is Stanley Eno and Jovi. But Jovi is too mboko to go global at times and Stanley Eno is too commercial to be taken seriously in certain lyrical tables. But King B has a, a, a good blend of this. And then he called some other names who I, I know them but I just feel like their rap is too too lyrical to go commercial. But King B has a rap which can go commercial as soon as people just catch up with his vibes. He's going to have a very sustainable rap career which we as Cameroonians can be proud of so I, i'm not worried about that so when i listen to the song he starts by saying he, he got the from the golden era that's why his bars are precious stones so yeah golden era bars precious stones you know the golden era is talking about yeah when the real rap was the rap spanning all from i said for me it starts from the carriers one spanning up to the packs and bigs then the nas and jay-z took it off then watered it down towards the end into the trappish generation yeah Okay, so he said, put me in the ground and watch me germinate. We all know that line, what it means. Um, so he said, there's that line we just brought to mind, Drake, when he said, um, haven't signed yet, hasn't dropped a single yet. Where Drake said, um, all right, he, he hasn't put out an album, but he has been around the world, just off his mixtape stuff. So, and he also said, hook to this rap like a fish caught up in the net so it's like we know like hook when somebody's hooked to something but also like he used the analogy of the fish cut up to a net trapped here yeah. then that, that's the lines i was also talking about where he said he's old and he's new he's a rookie and he's a vet he's inseparable he's inseparable with his music like the brooklyn's and the net so i like some of these things he's doing here because for we all know like hip-hop fans hip-hop is a bigger culture yeah it's not just about rap there's rap there's graffiti there's a b-boying and dancing things to it then there is part of it which is like the whole basketball thing which is attached to it so if you, if you are familiar with the basketball culture it all started in brooklyn and brooklyn's have the basketball team the brooklyn nets so he said like the brooklyn's and the net brooklyn nets yeah so there's that whole hip hop thing which is for history then he goes into the dialect thing which is here from the, the manulan which supposedly i should be understanding because i'm from the manulan too but too bad man no excuse man my bad i don't understand the dialect yeah and then he went now to say django on chain man he went to go some steady flows with the chain chain the in in rhyme scheme for a while then i like his his dexterity there he tried to speed up his flow because usually king b has a kind of educative flow where he's taking it slow so you understand the germ in the lines here yeah? but now he speed he had to speed it up a little bit just so i can also twist it when i want to yeah and he also went super speed with the flow where he was talking about um old school nigga with a new school flow and then now i like this part from here it started getting interesting he was going directly at the industry speaking his mind 
so he started by saying um he knows he knows leo and loco but he does not want to sing yeah it's like people want him to sing and, and that's what i was just saying like there's that tendency of most rappers singing i don't want to call names but we all know the rappers i'm talking about where you sing just so you have commercial club bangers out there but now it kills your your rep as a rapper and you become too much of a singer so he said he does not want to be local or leo they are known for that you know, his suggestion was we have different styles and everybody's a king on that lane his own lane let's put our different styles together and that's how we win because two phase was two phase Dibanj was Dibanj, crazy, and MI was MI. That's what put the entertainment scene of Nigeria to another level. When P Squares came and did the whole dancing Chris Brown, Michael Jackson mix together, that so everybody came beyond diversity to the table. At no point did MI decide to become Two Two Face to be singing just because Two Face was banging at the time. He was patient and his own time came around, yeah. And then he said like um, different branches to a tree, one stem in the ground so that's all analogy to cameroon like there are different branches everybody's doing what they're doing you are doing vocal rap you are doing um the, the the how can i call it classical rap you are doing um the trappish rap everybody's doing what they're doing you're singing an afro thing but they're all coming from one tree and i feel like cameroon has a very rich tree from our makosa culture to our we could see later on we have a very rich diversity uh, culture we can capitalize on but for some reason well it is what it is and then now this way got interesting because he was calling names and most of these guys are my guys here yeah. i know them in different levels because i've been around the hip-hop scene like that for a while but just behind the scene my own way here yeah. so when i was calling the names i was picking up and i was like whoa and for some reason i don't understand why bloggers don't pick up things like this i mean things that really get your brain thinking and then you are like this guy took his time to write this not something where you just drink get drunk for a second i mean when somebody's even writing a song when he's drunk i'm like okay that means I, I have to be my brain capacity has to get weaker for me to be able to understand this thing or something well okay that's another side back to the subject matter so i like the part where he started he said killer to the rhyme with my girlfriend askia <laughs> for those who know rhyme killer that's a Cameroonian rapper i mean that's my guy yeah and his wife is askia so king b and my man that's his wife not his girlfriend but anyway or maybe you mean girlfriend like your friend who is a girl ask her. i don't know man but i just yeah but i like the, the smart line of rhyme killer killing the rhymes and then your girlfriend is asking her who is his wife now then he said my girl coming cleo the way i bring the gray out man there's a rapper cleo gray that's the name he's shouting out there when i was young i went for holidays man young holiday then he went on to say when it's lunch time i eat the mic like monster mike monster man he went straight out to just shout out napster man so he was shouting out like everybody in the hip-hop game for some reason people are not going to pick up this i'm like what is happening here but i'm not worried yeah i know like with this skill set when he's going to get the right shine he's going to do the right thing because the other guys get the right shine and then just mess it up i, I mean like i keep on saying cameron is stuck because the wrong people get the attention and the right people don't get attention so it's just that whole dilemma we are first in here then he said bring the whole gang like i'm jovi man we know jovi and the mboko gang they come hard he went on to say beat my chest king kong stanley we know the king kong story is on some the gorilla who beats his chest but also stanley is known for some level of pride and everything so beating your chest might also symbolize some level of pride or satisfaction in what i've done what i've accomplished and stanley has accomplished the most if yeah the most when it comes to our modern day entertainment and not talk of hip-hop or let's say yes entertainment as a whole stanley has accomplished the most so he beats his chest quite often and being a bangy boy man what do you expect the guy's got to beat his chest man i guess bang are just proud of who they are <laughs> okay oh next thing he said blueprint to this rap empire call me hakim for those who know there's a rapper blue blueprint hakim so he got the blueprint to the rap game call me hakim it's really an old school rapper then he went straight to the point after shouting all these guys he gets the attention and he has told them okay yeah you're all of this you do this you do that i've called your names but now it's like tutu's hip-hop is down not where it should be somehow that's in line with what uh, was his name this guy who said we don't have a plan Max cortez but now as i said I should be cleaning up my house. Don't come and teach me how to clean up my house. It's my business. That's disrespectful when you come to clean my house. Or I give you permission to come and clean my house. You don't just come and clean my house by yourself. So he's cleaning up his house now. So he doesn't, we're not where we're supposed to be. 
and you have to build a kingdom before we start talking about a king we know that that's the issue in cameroon of who is the king who is the king of the hip-hop who is the king of rap some is between jovi and um, what's his name jovi and stanley you know and all of that but now he says that's he's just sending out the, the he's putting out the message out there guys we got to build a kingdom we don't have a kingdom now for all for all we know we just have a street in some neighborhood somewhere in fiango not talk of a kingdom nothing is organized so you can't be talking about a king man build something which is worth we take pride in then you can call yourself the leader of it here yeah. and then he went on to say um bars he likened the bars he's the iron beast is the lion then um he's a baller i love this part man because i i kobe is my all-time best basketball player so when he called kobe i was just like okay man put your song on echo.online let me buy this song man i need to support you i just need this song on echo.online i need to buy this song once he called kobe Bryant, that was it he had done a couple of other old school allusions um basketball allusions basketball history things but when he touched kobe i was like man i need to support this track whatever just put the song although it's out just put it on echo.online and i'll definitely be buying and pushing out to one or two of my guys to buy it too man so he said um big baller in the game r.i.p kobe bryant man he went on to talk about the anglophone crisis and the wars has got to stop we know the crisis happening in the english part of cameroon all the stress so the war has got to stop and then he said the youths are alcoholic and that's a whole some whole message there yeah we have all these troubles but for some reason people just passively exist through these things because they, they are high of alcohol or the other things which i don't want to mention so I just feel like my boy King B swag and then he concluded by saying he's a rapperholic. So he started off by def- it's a it's a good script because he introduced it by defining rapperholic and now he said I am the rapperholic. Oh what I said in the beginning and after all I've told you I am the rapperholic. That's how he closes it. I feel like this song is very similar to the, the verse MID with the cipher with Vector where he touched so many things all in one one year so this was a strong one out there but my boy king b swag as i say the future of africa man max got skin big swag um drizzy leak all day all day i'm out your boy ambassador ambassador again put your track on echo on online so we can support you i'm out thanks for watching that video hope it inspired you to want to commit to check out if you want more content from us no worries we got you covered all you need to do is hit the subscribe button hit the notification button then sit back relax and enjoy daily content from us it's been eight on check TV. we are craziness with the strategy